revelation that I'm giving you, I didn't learn from a man. Y'all remember Paul writing to the church at Galatians and Galatians 1.11, get it? Paul said, I certify, brethren, mm -hmm, that the gospel that I preach is what? Not after man. Y'all got it yet? What'd it say? But I certify you, brethren, the gospel which is preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it. But by the what? Revelation of who? All right, I submit unto you the things I'm about to teach you. I didn't learn it from a man. I searched the scripture. And I begin to dig this out. And I've heard a lot of teaching about the first fruit. But God revealed to me that the first fruit, watch what I'm about to say, is the seed. What I say? The first fruit is the seed. God starts you off with harvest. And the seed is the harvest. Are you listening? And when you sow the seed, it activates, manifests, and demonstrates the harvest. The first fruit is actually your breakthrough seed. Now, I cannot possibly give you all of this information that it took me months to teach. But I just want to give you an outline so you can understand the revelation of the first fruit seed. Are you listening? Now, <clears throat> Proverbs 3 and 9. Proverbs 3 and 9. What does it say? Notice what it says. Honor who? The Lord with what? Honor the Lord with thy substance. Say, honor the Lord with my substance. And with what? Now, now look, take a look at that. And with the first fruits of all thine increase. So all increase comes from the seed. That's how you know the first fruits is the seed. Because God starts you off with what? harvest, right? Then he goes on to say what? The next verse, so shall thy borns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with what? With new wine. Read the next verse. My son, despise not the chastening or the instruction of the Lord neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected. Even as a father, the son in whom he delighted. Okay, now write these things down. Number one, there's systematic sowing. Systematic sowing. Because remember, all sowing is based upon what? Increase. Then there is spontaneous sowing. Now pay attention. Money, money cometh is not systematic. It's spontaneous. You may walk up and sow a seed and go back to your seat and God say, bring 5,000. Well, he's not going to actually do something that you don't have. The thing is, can you turn it loose? Can you die to it? Very important. The first fruit is not money cometh because the first fruit is systematic in nature. Money cometh is spontaneous. Are you listening? Now, I'm not going to go into the story of money cometh. You've been around our spiritual father long enough to know. And I'm going to tell you, when he was in that store, I was in there with him. Are you listening? When he got money cometh, I was in there with him. And so were you. You should have said, me too. Because all of us are a product now of the money cometh mantle. And things are going to speed up exponentially in your lives. 
So you have systematic sowing, spontaneous sowing, and then you have sacrificial. You got to make a sacrifice, a living one. And then there is strategic sowing. My son who's up on this stage with me, see everybody be waiting on a job evaluation for increase, not him. He starts tithing and sowing at the next level. Oh, y'all didn't catch it. He starts tithing and sowing at the level he want to go to. Then it show up. Well, what bought it? The seed and the tithe. See, write this down. Stop. S-T-O-P. Write it down vertically. S-T-O-P. Y'all ready for this? Never forget it. I went to a stop sign in the subdivision as I was headed out of the subdivision. I got to the stop sign and I heard these words. Stop teaching on poverty. Start teaching on prosperity. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Are you listening? The S is for the seed. The T is for the tithe. The O is for offering. And the P is for your prosperity. That's your next stop. You will live in prosperity the rest of your days because you are connected to the strongest financial mantle in the whole world. All right? So now you have to give sacrificially. All the seed that you sow, children, is precious. Even if it's a dollar. Don't compare yourself to other people. Okay, and then finally, there's supernatural sowing. So there's your five graces. All right? Now, I'll show you how God brought me into the revelation of the first fruit. Amen? Now, y'all remember I told y'all I went to that meeting in College Park, Georgia. And God spoke to me and told me to bring my spiritual father who taught at the two o'clock service that hundred dollar seed. I did. And I shared with you when I got back home, the whole church marched. Are you listening? Because every seed reproduces after its own kind. That's been since November 98. And it has never stopped. People have never stopped walking. And I don't tell them to run to the altar. This is not a gimmick or a game. You must sow by revelation. And I submit unto you, the first fruit seed is by revelation. All right? So now, in order to prove that out, uh, turn to Genesis chapter number four. We'll read the first couple of verses. And um, I'm just... In this session, I want to talk to you about the first fruits, show you how it work, and that's all you need to know. How I came to the revelation of all of it would take entirely too much time. Are you listening? Because it's very detailed, and you had to be a student to search it out. Are you listening? Well, Genesis 4, 1, read. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived. And she bared Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Very important. Very important. Because the son, the male son, is the carrier of the seed. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Amen. You can have a daughter, but she ain't carrying your seed. She takes on the name and the seed of another man. It didn't say you're not kin. The seed has a name attached to it. Read the text. And she again bear his brother Abel. Now pay attention to this. Abel was a what? Keeper of the sheep. And Cain was a what? Tiller of the what? All right. So Abel's living was dealing with sheep 
cattle, goats, all that stuff, right? And Cain was like a farmer. Y'all got it? Now notice it says, read, and in the process of what? In the process of time. In the process of time, what happened? It came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, uh oh, and Abel brought up the first links of his flock. And of the what? All right, now I don't have time to go through all these definitions. First fruit, first links, firstborn. Are you listening? You will find these words throughout the scripture, and this is what you need to know. First means first in time, first in order, first in rank. It means the chiefest part. It means the best thereof. You know, God always gives us the best. Why should you settle for less when God has given you the best? God's best is the seed. God became a man in the form of a seed sold himself so you can walk in the blessing. All right? All right. So read the next verse. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. Read the verse above it again. And Abel, and he also brought up the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. In other words, Abel bought unto God as an offering the first, the seed, the chiefest part, the best. Are you listening? Because in the scripture, the firstborn of man and beast belong to God. Are you listening? The firstborn and the firstling talks about the seed that opens the matrix or the womb of a woman or the womb of an animal. Y'all got it? Now, both the seed and the tithe were incorporated into the law. That's why a lot of people um, try to bring the seed and the tithe under the law. But in Galatians 3, you read it for yourself, it said 430 years before the law was given, Abram gave tithe to Melchizedek. So that should end all question about was it under the Mosaic law. Are you listening? All right. Now, notice the phrase in the process of time. That simply means Adam is the one who trained his boys how to sow. Are you listening? Now, God had respect for Abel's offering, but he rejected Cain's offering. Why would God reject Cain's offering? Because he did not bring what his father taught him. Sometimes we bring God any kind of old offering. God say that wasn't your best. It wasn't the chiefest part. You didn't even allow me to talk to you. All right, thank you. Remember, the greatest thing you can hear in giving as I heard from God. Once you do that, it's over. Because God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. God ministers seed to the sower. God gives a sower seed with instruction. All right? So this has to do with the first fruit seed. Now, it'll use terms like firstlings and firstborn. But all of those terms, when you study them out in the scripture, will lead you to this, that God was revealing the seed is what I'm after. Okay. Read, finish that Genesis 4, because it's something I want them to see. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, God had what? God is not going to respect 
what he didn't tell you to bring. Because I found out when it come to God, he always got a number you didn't plan on. You got to die. All right, read the next verse, son. Now pay attention. And I think I want you to read this out of um, the New Living and the NIV. And the Lord said unto Cain, somebody else get the New Living, somebody else get the NIV. And the Lord said unto Cain, why are you wroth? Why are you angry? Why are you mad? And why is your countenance fallen? If thou doest what? Y'all know what well mean? Follow and obey the revelation. If thou do as well, shall you not be accepted? And if thou dost not well, oh, sin lieth after at the door. And only the seed can conquer and destroy sin. Lord, have mercy. Y'all caught that? Sin was conquered by sea. All right, y'all got it? Now read that out of the, um, you finished reading it? Read the rest of it. And to you shall be sin's desire. And thou shalt rule over what? Well, who is the him he talking about? He talking about satanic forces. The spirit of mammon that try to talk you out of this seed thing. Seed is not a bill. It's a revelation. And once you get a hold of it, seed will cancel all debt. All right. I want you to pay attention because I'm going back into this many ways. So it says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of what? All thy what? All right. And we say that the first fruit, fruit is the what? Say the seed. Say the first fruit is the seed. All right. Now y'all remember in St. John 1, 1 through 14, we say in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God, right? And the word was made flesh, right? Right? Then we find out that the seed is the word of God, right? Now, in St. John 12, 24, St. John 12, 24, Jesus said, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground, and die, it what? It abideth what? So a seed cannot multiply, be fruitful, dominate till it's sown. Except the corner we fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bring it forth much fruit. Remember I told you, uh, Luke 8 and 11, the seed is the word of God, right? that was made flesh, right? Because God was interested in getting someone after his own kind. You know, the word can be made flesh in your life today. All right, just trying to show you. All right, now, it's important to understand this. A seed is not a seed, are you listening? If you don't sow it. A seed got to be sown. Now remember I taught you that in him was life. He was the seed of life. He was the word of life. Right? Y'all got that? Okay. Now in um, um, St. John 10, that the 13th verse? St. John 10, 13, read it. I 
That's okay. It's in St. John 10. What happened? We lost it? St. John 10. It's the place where Jesus said, no man take my life. That's not in the notes. Thank you. St. John 10, I don't think we started at 18, though. I think we started at 17. St. John 10, 17, read. Jesus said, therefore do it, my father love me, because I do what? I lay down my life for who? That I might take it again. No man taketh my life from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up. This commandment have I received of my father. So Jesus is a seed. He had to sow his life as a seed. Satan thought, if I take him out, I get rid of him. But the purpose of the seed was to reproduce after his own kind. Y'all with me so far? Now, I told you, God give you the seed because he wants you to start off with it. When you sow it, right, it goes down into the ground and it comes back up. Uh-huh. With seed. Y'all got it? More seed to sow and more fruit to eat. Did you know you're a fruit tree? Do you know people can eat from your life and live? Thank you for your enthusiasm. Now, I told you Jesus is the first fruit seed. He's also the firstborn seed. He's also the firstborn of many brethren. What does all of that mean, Dr. Walker? I'm glad you asked. 1 Corinthians 15, 20, and 21. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the what? The first what? The first fruit of them that what? All right. So in order for him to be the first fruit of those who slept, he had to be the seed. Because in order for God to get all of those up who believed on him before he came, a seed had to be sown. Can y'all see that? He's the first fruit of those who slept. All of those who fell asleep in Christ, God said, I got a seed that's going to get them up. He's become the first fruit of them that slept. Read. For since by man came death, by man also came. Uh-huh. For since by man, not, not God, for since by man, the first man, Adam, death came. God said in order for me to deal with death, I got to have a seed. It's the seed that conquered death, hell, and the grave. Now, 1 Corinthians 15, 36. Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it what? Except it what? The word quickened means what? To make alive. So when God wants to make something alive, he says something got to be sown. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I just showed you that the first fruit is the seed because there is no harvest without a seed. Can you see it? Can you see it? Okay. Now, that would be okay if that was all it was. But let's go to, my goodness, let's go to Romans 8. 29. 
for whom God did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of who? Of his son. That he might, that he might be what? Now I know you talk behind these Greek scholars and all these smart people, they're going to tell you, well, the firstborn never means the first, you know. And I say, yeah, that's fine. But when you really read and study the scripture, uh-huh, first, mean first in time, first in order, first in rank, the chiefest part. Are you listening? He was called Mary's firstborn son. He is the firstborn from the dead. He's the firstborn from the dead. No, no. He's the firstborn from the dead, and so are you. Because he was the seed that you were in. And when he went down, you went down. When he got up, you got up. Romans 8, 29, read. For whom he did foreknow, he also predestinated to be conformed, to be conformed unto the image of his dear son. Oh, that he might be the firstborn among what? He's the first, that's talking about him being the firstborn from the dead. I know you don't see it yet. That's why God sent me here. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Colossians 1, 13 through verse 18. Take y'all so long to get there. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? In whom we have what? Now here's something, I don't have time to cover all of this, but do you know that the seed had to be redeemed? The seed had to be bought back. The seed had to be what? Redeemed, bought back. Read the text. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image? Who Do you know we are the image of the invisible God? Read the text. Oh, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Watch this. The firstborn of how many creatures? Why? Because the seed is responsible for everything else coming into existence. Remember I told you the seed is the source, the supplier, and the sustainer of all life. Read the text. For by him, for by him were all things what? So all things were created by the word and the word is a what? Seed. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Read. That are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones, or dominions, or principalities, or powers. All things were created by him and, by him and for him. Read. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Read. And he is the head of who? The body, which is what? Which is who? Say, I'm a part of, oh, he's the head of the body. That's me. So when the head was sold, the body was sold. When the head got up, the body got up. The problem now is the head took a seat at the right hand of the father and the body stayed in the earth realm. But the body got to realize when the head took a seat, you took a seat. Y'all got it? Read the text. Who is the what? Who is the beginning? The church, the church, the church is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That in all things, he might have the preeminence through who? Us, the seed. Oh my God. Am I helping you? Galatians 3. 
25. No, I don't want that. 27. I don't have time to go through all this. Read. Galatians 3, 27. For as many as you that have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. But you all, Christ is a seed. Read. Oh, if you be Christ, say I am, then are what? Then are you Abraham's what? If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and you are what? Heirs according to the what? Did you not see that? You, we are the seed of Abraham. And if we are the seed of Abraham, we are Christ's seed. Y'all got it. You're seeing this now. Because all of this is still talking about the first fruit, the firstborn. Are you listening? Remember, the firstborn is the one who opens up what? The matrix. It's your breakthrough. The seed cannot be stopped because the seed have all power. The seed is omnipotent. Thank you for your enthusiasm. The seed cannot be stopped. Death could not stop the seed from getting up. Get up, get on up. That's where James Brown got it. No, I'm sorry. Look at y'all. He got to have a little fun. Now, y'all see this, huh, children? The church is the firstborn from the dead. And it is through the church that we have preeminence, that Jesus is able to have preeminence in all things. Now, that would be fine if I didn't take you to Hebrews 2. I'm not going to read all of it. Well, let's read it, verse 14 to the end. Hurry up. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Read. That through what? That through death. The seed was not afraid to die. Because the seed knew that once it died, it would only multiply. Read the text. That through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. So the seed had to die to destroy death. Read the text. And to deliver them who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Now, Pay attention. For verily, talking about Jesus, you would have to go to the sixth verse to know this. For verily, he took not on himself the nature of angels, but he took on, he took on him who? You remember God told Abram, in all, in your seed, shall all families of the earth be blessed? Well, why does the church think he was talking about Isaac? Wasn't talking about Isaac. He was talking about Christ. If he was talking about Isaac, it would have been seeds, plural. I don't have time to preach all this to you. Read your own Bible. Are you listening? Are you listening? But Christ is the seed of Abraham. Christ is the seed of David. Abraham for covenant, David for king. God promised David, upon your throne, I'm going to raise up your seed, which is Christ, to sit on your throne forever. King Jesus. King's rule and reign. Read that verse again. For verily, he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of who? Abraham. That promise that God made to Abram was manifested in him. Read. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he be, may be a merciful and faithful high priest. That's all you need to know. Y'all got this? We getting there. 
we get there because I need to show you how it worked. I had to show you that it was the seed. Now, you're just going to have to follow the rest of this. Turn to Exodus 13, and I'm going to give you this so we can start winding this down. The revealing of the first fruit. Are you listening? Do you know that the firstborn have to do with birthright? So the seed has to do with what? Birthright. So the seed have birthrights. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Are you listening? Now, how did I come to this conclusion that the seed, well, you saw it, or the first fruit is the seed? Y'all ready for this? God has always been after the seed. Because if I get the seed, I get all the generations. Oh, Jesus. You know what the Bible say? The generation of the upright, they shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be and their houses, their righteousness endure, remain it forever, endure it forever. Are y'all with me or you're going home? We almost finished. I just got to show you how it work. Are you listening? Now, the firstborn seed, my goodness, that's the one you have dominion with. All I can do is share with you my own life. Are you listening? When I met Apostle Thompson, I was sowing to him $100. That's from College Park, Georgia. Y'all remember that? So every time I would see him, I sold $100. And he said to me, Son, every time I see you, you keep sowing $100. Well, you see, God didn't have to tell me more than one time. See, some of y'all on that short yellow bus, you, you don't have the revelation. Somebody got to keep telling you. God didn't tell me but one time. I saw what happened when I got back to church. I said, okay, Lord. You know, that same man God told me when I needed $100,000, send him a $10,000 check. I thought surely God done lost his God mind. Because I need 100000 He's a multi-millionaire leader. He's flying around in jets paid for. All of his houses paid for. Surely God should have said, uh, Dr. Thompson, there's a young man I'm sending from Gretna. He's out there. He needs $100,000. Since you're a multi-millionaire, I need you to give him 100000 to get his building completed. God said, I don't work like that. God said, the seed will make it happen. Are you listening? I got back home. I needed 100,000. God told me to send him 10. 10,000. All on church record. Y'all ready for this? Add a zero to a $10,000 seed. See what you show up with. Am I preaching, son? Is that $100,000 all day long? Okay. God manifested the 100,000. Look at this building. Are you listening? And don't ever put Chantel over no budget. Chantel is the budget breaker. So if you go to Shanty, make sure, and her mama, yeah, they, they don't stick to budgets. Because what you see is what you get. So C is in C, okay. So your seed should help you to see brighter days. All right, thank you for your enthusiasm. Now let's get back so we don't get off track. Amen. Now, Jesus is a seed. In uh, Luke 2, you will find out that he was the firstborn son of Mary. He opened the matrix. Are you listening? Now, now, God took the seed, which is the firstling of flocks of man and beast, and he incorporated it into the law. Just like the tithe was before the law and incorporated into the law, so was the seed. So now we got to go to Exodus 13 so I can start winding this down. Read Exodus 13 and 1. Read. 
The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all of the what? Firstborn what? Whatsoever open it what? The womb. Whatsoever open it up the matrix among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is what? It is what? That would be nice, except for I went to the NIV on this one. Somebody get the NIV. Let me help you. We're going to read down. They're going to say the same thing. The Lord said to Moses, consecrate to me every firstborn what? Every firstborn what? Why wasn't it the firstborn daughter? Because he was after the seed. Thank you for your enthusiasm. God said, if I get the seed, I get the whole generation. If I get the seed, I got everything. So if God gets your money seed, he can take care of everything. <clears throat> you move from labor to favor. Y'all ready for this? Let the seed do the work. Why are you working so hard for the money when God say, I just sent you to the job to get seed to sow? So you must manage your seed properly. You need seed wisdom. You need seed sowing wisdom and harvest wisdom. Y'all seeing this, children. So God said, all of the firstborn males of man and beast, it is what? It is mine. Now, y'all won't know how it became God's? I don't have time to go through all this, children. It's revelation. Y'all remember when Joseph got sold into Egypt? He was the seed. Y'all remember what Joseph told him? When y'all get out of here, take my bones with you. Y'all remember when God in uh, Genesis 15 and 13 told Abram, say, no of a surety that your seed, that your seed shall be a stranger uh -huh, in a land that is not theirs. And they would be afflicted for 400 years. But don't worry about it. Because after 400 years, I'm going to show up and I'm going to deliver them out. Amen. So you know what happened. The seed was sown in the Egypt and they began to afflict them. Don't be afraid of affliction. The more the seed is afflicted, the more it multiplies. Because affliction is the pressure on the seed. So when those financial crises come and crunches come, get your head out the sand. Your seed is about to squeak. Don't fret. You getting out of debt. Y'all got it? So that seed went down into Egypt and God said, I'm going to deliver your seed after 400 years after they have been afflicted and they're coming out with great substance. You got to go back and read it. That's Genesis 15, 13, 14. You read it now because I got to go somewhere. Now, the seed got down to Egypt through Joseph. Then there was a Potiphar. No, I'm sorry. There was a Pharaoh that was raised up that didn't know Joseph. And he began to afflict the seed more and more. The more he afflicted them, the more they multiplied. God found a special man by the name of Moses and said, I've seen and I've heard the affliction of my people. And God said, I am come down to deliver them. Well, God wanted to deliver this generation, so he sent Apostle Leroy Thompson and gave him money coming. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Because right, he's a financial deliverer. And so is Dr. Walker. By apostolic grace and connection. All right. Am I helping you? All right. So they begin to afflict them. God say, I'm going to come down. I'm going to deliver you. Whenever God wants to deliver you, he sends a man. Thank you for your enthusiasm. So God tells Moses, I'm come down to deliver them. Now I'm going to put some words in your mouth. 
to go talk to Pharaoh. Moses said, Father, I'm not a man of eloquent speech. Use Aaron. God was mad with him because God said, I'm going to put words in your mouth. Who made your mouth? Your mouth is a seed sowing machine. And when I put words in your mouth, it's me speaking. And when those seeds go out, they don't come back empty. But okay, since you want Aaron, your eloquent speaking brother, then I'm going to allow you, Moses, to put words in Aaron's mouth. And when Aaron speak to Pharaoh, are you listening? This is how the lineup go. You now, Moses, become God to Aaron. And Aaron is now your prophet. Because all prosperity comes through the prophet. God raised up the prophet for your prosperity. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. You never appear before a prophet empty-handed. Am I helping you? Okay. Well, I believe there were 13 plagues that was released on Pharaoh, but he didn't get the message. Now watch what I'm about to tell you. I don't have time to go through all this. God told Moses, I know all those plagues I did before. He wasn't going to let you go. I was performing those plagues to make his little heart hard. Because remember when Moses showed up to Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, who in the hell is God? Who? Who? Who that? Who that talking about taking you away from Pharaoh? Don't he know how much power I got? I'm the ruler of the world. God said, Pharaoh, you didn't hear Beyonce so. You must not know about me. You must not know about me. Why are y'all laughing? Are you listening? Are you listening to me? I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. Don't tell me about how long I've been going. I'm just getting started. Now listen, children. That's why I'm sitting down. Listen to me, children. Listen to me. This is some good stuff. I ain't going to pass this way too many times. Listen to me, children. God said, Pharaoh will not let you go. But down in Louisiana, we have a saying, the coup de gras. God said, I saved the coup de gras for last. And this is what the coup de gras was. God said to Moses, get a lamb for every house. A lamb for every house. Do you know that the lamb that was slain had to be without blemish? A male. Uh-huh. Hello. Because the seed is what's going to deliver you. Are you listening? God told Moses, I need you to instruct the children of Israel to, sl you know, to get a lamb for every family. I need you to slay the lamb. I need you to put blood on the lintel and the two doorposts representing the cross. Thank you for your enthusiasm. He said, I know Pharaoh wouldn't let you go, but tonight is your night because I'm about to pass through Egypt and all of the firstborn of male and beast, of man and beast, all of the firstborn males of man and beast are you listening to me? Will be slain in Egypt this night. But I did something for you. I had you to slay a lamb. And when I see the blood, I'm going to stand over that house. And when I stand over that house, the destroyer cannot come in because I'm there. He got to do like Eddie Kendricks, keep on trucking, baby. Are you listening to me? And the Bible says that there was not one household in Egypt that the firstborn male died. Not only of man, but also of beasts. And God said, understand what just happened. 
because of what just happened, all of the firstborn belong to me. That's why I told you the first fruit, the firstborn, all of that was to reveal the seed. Are y'all seeing this? All right, I don't have time to go through the rest. I can show y'all in the Bible where the first was always given to the priest and the tithe was always given to the Levites. That'll be for another time. I just want to wrap up by showing you how this works. Can we do that? Huh? Okay, this is how the first fruit work. It's all based upon increase because the first fruit is what? The seed. All multiplication, all prosperity, all abundance, all opulence is in the what? Is in not just the seed, the sown seed. A seed look pretty. You got to sow it. You can't shine the seed, get some polish out and shine the seed. In the book of Haggai 2, 19, it says the seed yet in the born. Some of y'all stashing money to the side, God said ain't doing nothing. It's in the born. Put it in the ground and your borns are overrun with plenty. <laughs> oh boy, this is something else. So this is how it works, children, to keep it simple for you. Your honor the Lord with, the, with your substance and with the first fruits of all of your what? So the seed is in what? Increase, right? So this is how it works. You go to a job, which is the place where you gather, Seed, right? And you know what God said to do? Uh-huh. Take the first fruit, which is the seed. Uh-huh. See, you might start off with a five dollars like my brother, Dr. Jeffrey Glenn Phillips. He was trying to save up money because he felt like his five dollars wasn't sufficient. So he would try to save up a bunch of money so he can sow like everybody else. But every time he would save up to sow in the apostle, something would happen and the money would go away. So he finally told the apostle, apostle said, well, son, that's because you're trying to sow above your level. Start somewhere. So he started off with $5. Are you listening? He was in a meeting. Now, you know he was a master cement man. Are you listening? And God told him, quit his job. Wilma had a fit. Are oh, you listening? On the front row in a meeting, prosperity, a camp meeting, one of those, God speaks to Dr. Phillips and says to him, uh, I want you to sow, I want to say it was $1,250 or $1,500. Whatever the number was, it was all they had on the checkbook. Thank you for your enthusiasm. So God speaks to Dr. Phillips. Now remember, he didn't turn in his $10,000 a week job where he got seed from the man was making 10,000 a week what y'all looking at or 10,000 a month what does it matter to you it's still money God told him to quit leave it walk away from it are you listening here in the meeting God speaks to him and say I want you to sow this amount of money and Wilma wrote the checks are you listening so he say write me a 1200 dollars check Wilma says to him, that's all we have. He say, write the check. You got to know him. Are you listening? You know what Wilma did? Wilma took the checkbook to it and write it you, write it you, you know, write it you got these self, with your crazy self. Then I tell you, if you write this, we ain't got nothing on the book. How we gonna make it? How we gonna make it? You just wrote off everything. You nut. Something wrong with you. But do you know when you sow it all, you qualify for the hundredfold return? Do you know, don't do that if God didn't tell you. Don't be, oh, I just got a revelation. God got to talk to you. He say God told him. All right, now, this man who was sowing $5 after sowing that seed, yeah, woman was mad then. Oh, Jesus, that same man over a protracted period of time, begin to sow 5,000 and 10,000 and 30,000 and 50,000 all at one time. 
I was his brother. I was right there with him. He was the one that came up with the evening and the morning seed, which I had no revelation of. In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thy hand. You know what it say. That's Ecclesiastes 11, 1 through 6. Psalm 126 talk about bearing precious seed. All the seed you sow is precious. So this is how it works. You go to your job, which is a source of seed. You ready for this? Take out your own bank statement. And you will notice every time they make a deposit, your account go up. That's called what? Increase. Thank you. So you need seed wisdom. You need to be able to tell God of that that just went up. I need for you to talk to me what you want me to sow. Because the first fruit is the what? Seed. And before you think about tithe, you should have been given a seed. Because the tithe protect your seed. I don't care what nobody say. You read Malachi. God say, prove me. Oh, uh, read it. Malachi 3.10 and we're going to have to roll this. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Look at your own, look at your own paycheck. Look at when it's deposited into the bank. Take a portion of that seed, amen, and plant it into that man and woman of God that's sitting right before me. That's your first fruit seed. That's not money coming though. Because you might give them your first fruit seed and get back to your seat and God say, bring them a thousand. That's money coming. Jesus Christ. Lord, I got so much. Have mercy. I know, that's my daughter saying, Daddy, you're about an hour again. How long I been, son? Oh, yeah. Always around the hour time. But it's worth it. Are you listening? All right. So, y'all see how it work. Get your paycheck. Look at what comes in. Take the best portion you can. Don't try to stress yourself out. Sow it. That's your first fruit seed. Are you listening? And God will begin to exponentially multiply, increase it, amen, so you can cancel all debt. All right? Now, remember I told y'all I started sowing $100, right? Is that right? Mm-hmm. Well, every month, God spoke to me in prosperity, 2021. 20, uh, he said, increase your seed. First, it was 100 it went up to 500, went up to 600, went up to 700, went up to 800. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Now it's up to 1,000. So the first of every month, I date a check dated the first of the month. And I send that $1,000 seed to my father. And since then, all heaven has broken loose. Are you listening? My wife and I, my family were able to sow in Founders Day. Are you listening? In that meeting, over $65,000. Well, if Apostle got all the money, where all that money coming from? You know what I told my wife? I'm not sowing. I'm sowing for your dream. You can't have a $2.5 million house paid for with a $100 seed. You got to sow. And you need a sowing grace to sow 50 all at one time. I could think of a lot of things I could have done with 50 Gs. Isn't that right? What's about you? Are you listening? And two of those seeds were 2020 seed, 2020 for 2020 vision. And God said, it is done. Y'all ready for this? Your first fruit seed is your connection. That's how you connect to your prophet, your man and your woman of God through your seed. Remember, whoever you are connected to is a prophecy to where you're going. And watch this. Your seed is how you stay connected. I'll share this one last thing. Y'all see how it works? Huh? 
Don't be afraid. That's your first fruit seed. And when you get to your seat and God say, bring him 500, don't hold back. If God is talking to you about sowing, he got something planned for you. All right, now here it is. Y'all remember Noah? Hmm? Noah had to bring on the boat, right? Of, yeah, Noah and his family. Then everything that God needed to replenish, repopulate the earth, replenish earth, right? He bought a male and a female, right? Because they had to come together, amen, so the seed can multiply and replenish the earth. Y'all ready for this? God didn't bring no killer whales on the boat. God didn't bring Shamu. God didn't bring bull reds and sockeles and catfish and trout and shoe pick and golf. He didn't. Y'all want to know why? Because all of those things were born from the water. Whatever you are born from, you must remain connected to. So make sure you'll see, stay connected. All right, give God praise. Somebody said, I thought you would never stop. I understand, but I believe in giving my best. And you got my best. I'll send you, those of you who want know to something, give your email address. Don't worry, we ain't coming after you for nothing. You belong to that man and woman right there. Don't you honor nobody above them. You can't bypass them talking about you going to apostle trying to impress apostle. Sow your seed into the man and woman of God that he put up under you, and they'll have the grace to say, go ahead on sow the apostle, because granddaddy sure enough for knowing it. But hear this, every time they sow, you sow. Every time they sow into Apostle Thompson, you go with them. And that's how I keep this whole congregation connected to apostle. Amen. Well, I hope you have thoroughly received what was shared with you, amen. I would have had um, that young man testify, but we've done enough. That young man right there who you see serving me came into this church, no formal training. He didn't go to no new believers classes. He didn't go on nothing ministry helps how to train to do nothing. He walked in the church, walked to the front, say, I'm gonna serve you. He was busted and disgusted. He said he had nothing when he showed up at the church. Are you listening? He had took, I think, your last bit of money out your 401 or something. Huh? Isn't that something? Took it all out. Are you listening? You know what? Every time that man served and picked me up, he put seed in my hand. That man sold over $70,000 into the kingdom. Well, how could he do that? He got a revelation of the power of a sown seed. Are you listening? And so that's what you have received, a sowing anointing. Let God talk to you. And your finances will grow off the hook. Amen. I salute you. All right, son.